an ABL probe that produces a higher resolution mesh, but in much less time. Sounds amazing, right? Introducing the Beacon. Autobit leveling is found on most new 3D printers these days, or if not, is often added as an upgrade. Most of the available ABL probes are plenty high in their accuracy, as I found out in this shootout video. With so many good probes already on the market, you would need something really innovative to stand out with a new product. And in my opinion, that's just what Beacon is. Beacon is a new ABL probe, or should I say surface scanner, and it is unique in its operation. All of the ABL probes that I've used travel down vertically towards the bed, stopping when triggered by the bed to measure the height at that point. And when a series of these points is measured in a grid over the entire surface of the bed, we can build up a 3D mesh representing the bed. And then the firmware will allow the nozzle to ride these contours to produce a perfect first layer, even on a bed that's not level or flat. But for Beacon, as we can see from this graphic, there's no moving up or down. It simply sweeps over the surface and that allows it to have great speed. It boasts incredible resolution, taking 1000 samples per second, and it can handle up to 110 degrees ambient, which will suit pretty much any 3D printer, just not those with really hot enclosed chambers. The key to this is that Beacon uses eddy currents. And personally, I have pretty much zero knowledge of eddy currents, so if you're like me, I've linked an entertaining electroboom video in the description for you to go and learn. The net result of this approach is that a Beacon ABL probe sweeping over the bed is very fast and produces very high resolution. So if you're someone who likes ABL but doesn't want to wait for the entire bed to probe before every print, then Beacon might just be for you. There is of course the cost, which is US $80. I pre-ordered mine and got it slightly cheaper than this, but then again, postage to Australia was expensive. Beacon won't run on every 3D printer, so let's quickly examine the prerequisites. The first of these is that we need Clipper firmware, not only for Clipper's tremendous processing speed, but also because Beacon doesn't plug into the mainboard, but rather a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi. It has its own MCU and is connected as such. Beacon needs a conductive bed, i.e. metal, without large magnets. Your typical spring steel removable sheet is absolutely perfect for this, as is the magnet underneath. However, printer beds, such as that on the Prusa Mark III, with large inbuilt magnets, are not recommended and may not work. The Beacon sensor is light, but it does take up more room than the average probe, and therefore you need room on your tool head. Most ABL probes are tall and skinny, whereas Beacon is wide and low. Furthermore, it must be mounted with the keep out zone above it respected, and in this volume we shouldn't have metal objects or we can throw off the readings. So make sure your target printer has a suitable zone where you can place the beacon to avoid disappointment. Finally, and this one did catch me out, an 8-bit mainboard in your clipper installation is not advised. I went through all of the trouble of designing a perfect custom mount, editing the firmware and completing the calibration, but every time I tried to home the machine, I got a communication timeout error. After some generous help on the Discord, it was proposed that the 8-bit mainboard that I was still running on my CR10 Max couldn't keep up, so I went through the whole process again on the second SK tank, and this time it worked perfectly. It's not the Beacon's fault, just more of the high demands of multi-MCU homing on Clipper. And that's why in this video, you'll see footage on two different printers, even though the installation was only successful on one of them. On to unboxing, and Beacon comes in this nice little plastic case. Inside, we have some mounting hardware, a 6 foot long braided USB cable to connect Beacon to your Pi or other SBC, some cable ties to help with cable management, and of course the actual Beacon ABL sensor. Out of interest, I compared the weight to a BL Touch, which came in at 7 grams, with the Beacon being approximately half, rounding up to 4 grams on my scales. Let's work our way through installation, starting with the docs. Linked from the main website is this documentation page. As well as technical support through Discord, we have a series of pages to assist us in installing the beacon. For the most part, what's on the quick start page is perfectly sufficient, especially if you've previously installed Clipper and understand the structure of the firmware. However, other pages have more detailed information, such as guidelines for designing a mount, and a complete set of commands that work with Clipper, and the complete set of parameters available for your configuration. 
So on to designing a mount, and there are some pre-made for Annex Engineering printers, VZ Bot, as well as Voron. And for any other printer, you can easily create your own by using either these diagrams or scrolling up and downloading a CAD model. My aim was to position the beacon where the current BL touch was sitting. There was already threaded mounting holes available and I figured there was just room to the side of the duct. I imported the beacon CAD with the red keep out zone on top. This is where we need to avoid having metal components and the green disc on the bottom is where the bed should sit. Of course, we can hide or show any of these components for clarity. My first version of a mount was pretty simple and basic but it was enough to allow me to verify the whole spacing of the beacon, as well as get a rough idea of where the beacon would sit on the machine. It's important to check all aspects, such as sufficient clearance for X-homing, clearance around existing part cooling ducts, and the sensor height relative to the tip of the nozzle. I iterated my amount version after version, each time changing things a millimetre or so and testing it on the machine to try and get the sensor into the correct position without fouling the existing parts. This was my final iteration, had sufficient clearance, holes for cable tyres and a lot of lightning by adding chamfers. The sensor sat just clear of the part cooling duct and the vertical offset versus the tip of the nozzle was just under 3 millimetres which was ideal. When you are finished designing your duct, you need to measure from the center of the logo to the tip of the nozzle to determine your X and Y offsets, the same as any other ABL probe. When designing a second mount for the second SK tank, I actually had more of a model to work around and this meant I got the design right on the first attempt. You'll notice that there is some geometry intersecting with the keep out zone, but there's no metal parts here and as such it hasn't affected functionality. And here's the beacon bolted into position ready for me to proceed with wiring. 1.8 meters or 6 feet is plenty long for the majority of 3D printers. However the CR10 Max is truly enormous and to match the length of the existing cables back to the Pi and mainboard I would need to extend. The SK tank was also tricky for me as I mount the Pi at the front underneath the touch screen. That means the cable would need to go over the back around the edges of the frame and back to the Pi and therefore the cable wasn't long enough. The solution for printers like this is to use a USB extension cable. After doing a quick test to make sure this would work, I ran the original supplied cable at the back of the print head with a little strain relief printed piece and then joined this up with the USB extender cable until they met at the back of the machine. Just be aware that the original cable has been tested for flex and movement whereas any extension cables you use have not. That's why my extension cable will be remaining static. We're up to firmware and calibration, which I found straightforward. To proceed, we're going to need to log into the Pi with SSH. You should know how to do this from installing Clipper, but if you don't, I have a video guide linked below. Here, I'm working from the quick start page, and now we just copy and paste the commands to install the required software. It did say it could take up to 10 minutes for this first section, but I found it was over in a matter of seconds. The next parts of the configuration we do from our Clipper web interface, in my case being main sale. We're going to copy and paste the configuration code from the docs page, inserting it into the moonraker.conf file before saving and restarting. Our next changes will occur in the printer.cfg file. We're going to copy the beacon section and then paste it into the printer config and I chose to do this in the same section as the previous BL touch config. Each beacon module will have a different serial ID address, so we need to come back to SSH, list the serial devices by ID. You will have at least two returned, the first being the main board that you're running Clipper on, but we're looking for the one with beacon in the name, and we're going to highlight and copy this string, paste it into our configuration file, and delete the placeholder text that was already there. Our only other change in this section is to modify the offsets we measured earlier, entering them for X and Y. If you are already running an ABL probe, BL touch or otherwise, you'll need to comment out these sections as they will conflict with beacon. You could delete them if you want, but I preferred to keep it until I knew everything was working, which ended up being important. If you don't have it already, you need to add a safe Z home position with a Z hop value of three. I already had this section, so I simply updated the Z hop value to three. The final change is in your stepper Z section. I already had the Z virtual end stop command, so all I had to do was insert the homing retract distance, leaving it at the zero value required. That's all of the firmware changes done, so we can now save the config to restart Clipper. 
time to calibrate and I'm continuing from the quick start guide here. The first thing we do is home X and Y and then we manually move the print head to the center of the bed. It doesn't need to be the exact center. For instance, on the CR10 Max, I use the same coordinates that I do for safe Z homing. We then send the command beacon calibrate. This is like regular probe calibrate and we use the minus one arrows to move the print head down to get the nozzle closer to the bed. Once it's just above, we put a piece of paper in place and use finer increments to move down until the piece of paper is just pinched by the nozzle. You might also notice that once you get this close, a red LED will be illuminated on the side of the beacon. Once you've found the right value, you can click the accept button and then enter save config, which will store the calibration data. The recommendation now is to heat up the bed to your regular printing temperature. And once everything is stable, to run the calibration sequence again. Except this time, the calibration values should be more accurate because the bed is at operating temperature. Once again, we accept the value, save our config, and once Clipper reloads, we should be able to see the calibration data at the bottom of our printer.cfg file. If everything's gone well, you should now be able to home the printer and the beacon will be used for the Z-axis end stop. If you run Z-Tilt, you can use the beacon just like any other probe to correct the positioning of the bed. And since you've changed the mass of the print head, just a reminder that if you're running input shaping, you'll need to recalibrate that as well. Finally, let's try some actual ABL probing and play with the settings. Here's the result of me running bed mesh calibrate for the first time using the default settings. My existing printer configuration was already set for a 7x7 mesh with an XY speed of 150 millimeters per second. In terms of the beacon, we're using the default mesh runs value of two. That means that when the first pass is done, it goes back in reverse over the same path, taking a second set of measurements. With these values, it took about 35 seconds to complete the mesh. And here's what was measured. Firstly, the raw values and then interpolated. Next, I headed into the printer configuration to increase the resolution. This scan was for an 11 by 11 mesh at the same 150 millimeters per second speed, still two mesh runs. And for all of this detail, we have the outstanding time of 54 seconds. I forgot to do Z tilt first, so this looks quite skewed, but there are many raw data points and it becomes even better with resolution once we interpolate. This time, let's tweak for speed instead of accuracy. This scan is back to 7x7, but at 200 millimeters per second and only a single mesh run. This is the same resolution I used to probe with, but it's over in only 11 seconds. The best part is to me, the data looks just as good as it ever did, despite the fast speed. So I prepared a quick real world print test, adding a bed scan into my start G code where previously I only did Z tilt. The bed heated up, the scan took place again in only 11 seconds. And as the initial skirt went down, I prepared to adjust the Z offset, which is still adjusted just like any other ABL probe. But I only needed to adjust the first layer by 0.05 millimeters. I'll probably fine tune the offset a little more, but already this is a fantastic first layer with the X being even the whole way over the bed. And it only took 11 seconds to scan. Beacon, like any upgrade, will not be for everyone. Some will think it's too expensive or perhaps they won't want to design a custom mount whereas others might want cutting edge and the speed and efficiency that it offers. Personally, I feel it's an interesting step in a positive direction. Let me know what you think about Beacon in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy cutting edge 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.